my grandfather's farm. Um, it's where my mom was raised. She and her 12 siblings. This is where they settled probably when about half the kids were born. One of the ways that they helped to pay for all the kids was they had a dairy, um, had a barn there right in the front, had a little store. They milked the cows morning and evening and they bottled the milk and sold it as grade A raw milk. It was always a place of freedom. We could go down there and typically, I mean, when I was at home, my mom watched me like a hog. I mean, I, yeah, I had some flexibility in my neighborhood and stuff, but when we went to the farm, we had 400 acres to roam. And we'd ride ponies, we'd drive the Jeep, we'd uh, drive the tractor, we'd um, fish in the pond across the, the road in the winter we'd go sledding and so there was always something to do. My dad was from the same area so we'd go down to see his mom and then we'd go over to the farm and see mom's mom and dad. My dad was born in Fidelity, Kentucky which was a mining camp for the Stearns Coal and Lumber and he um, his dad was killed in a mining accident when he was two years old and the mining company gave uh, my grandmother a life insurance policy of four thousand dollars and she built a four-room house in Whitley City, Kentucky. My grandfather uh, always wore shoes called brogans which were high top leather shoes that was what he wore on the farm and he wore khaki pants and khaki shirts and a, a bolo hat, I think is what they call them, a safari hat that my Uncle Estel had brought him back from the war. And I can remember following him around with other cousins, kind of like a gaggle of geese. My grandma was about 4'11", and we always thought that when we got as tall as grandma, we had arrived. And Grandma would uh, always wore an apron, and she wore um, work shoes uh, of a sort. And she was a good cook. She used to make oatmeal for us in the mornings for breakfast, and I used to think that I could survive on oatmeal alone. And then she would bake biscuits, and we'd take a pocket full of biscuits whenever we took off around the farm. The Jeep is right in there. Okay. Um, so, so all of this stuff is in the way of extracting it. There's the, there's the floor. Yeah. And then if you look right in there, you'll see the flat fender in the the wheels. That's the Jeep. You see it? I see the wheel. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's the flat fender. My goodness. And then this stuff. See, there's some wood that has been stacked up in there. I don't think that's the floor. My first memories of the Jeep primarily uh, revolve around us riding in it. And like when my grandfather was first first bought it, I'm, I think the statistics are, and we have to verify this once we get to the VIN number, but I think it was a 49 Willis uh, CJ3A. He bought it brand new. I don't know where he bought it. I, I think that would be interesting to find out. Um, he he drove it around, and then the kids always, there was always a pile of kids in it. And then he would set it out in the yard, and we would play in it. And there is a picture of some of the older cousins playing in the Jeep that we've got, that my mom had, um, that I need to relocate again. But I've seen it recently. 
and then as we got older my uncle junior would drive it and dan and i would go along in the jeep with junior and we'd go out on the fields and uh, cut down bull nettles and check on the cattle and check on the fences and then we uh, as we got old enough to figure out we could drive it then we would you know at 11 12 13 years old we'd get in it start it up because the key was always in it start it up and drive around the farm well if we got it in a pickle where we couldn't get it out then we'd have to go get the tractor to pull it out and so it, it became a toy for us and most of the kids the grandkids drove that jeep at some point just on the farm it was just one of those things junior set us in it and say go to it all right boys and girls we are out here on the family farm in mccurry county kentucky and uh papa murphy tell me what kind of uh mission we're on right now we're on the mission to dig out the 49 willies jeep that was purchased brand new by my grandfather and i'm assuming that i may have to verify that with a, a vin number on the jeep but it's in a barn that collapsed five years ago in a snowstorm uh, so it's got a lot of debris on top of it so we're digging out the debris in order to be able to retrieve the jeep and we have just finally begun to see it so all of this was collapsed roof and tucked away down in here a little jeeper we're gonna call Dillard hey buddy we found you <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Hey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is more fun than playing with. <laughs> fun because you know I, I mean obviously never in my life in Louisville did I ever drive a car or a Jeep or anything uh, on the roads in Louisville because that would have been against the law uh, so the idea that I could go down to the farm and I could hop in a Jeep and I could drive it at 12 years old was like big stuff and so you know Dan and I it was like I said it was our toy you know I mean the kids nowadays may have four wheelers they may have um you know motorcycles or whatever well we had the jeep and ponies and so you know it was like an amusement park i mean we just had a blast doing next to nothing just playing around so you know we we would just drive the jeep around and play you know play like we were doing something Well, here's where we're at at the moment. Um, she's coming out, slowly getting all the weight off of the top. We've gotten the roof, two roofs pulled back and over there to the side with the winch. And uh, slowly we are excavating this 49 Willys Jeep. And I always remember because it was such a a key part of that farm experience that I always wanted to own it. And the last time that I asked Junior 
that I'm aware of that I could buy it was in 1986 and he said nah, I'm gonna fix it up I went then and bought the 61 willies that you and I are reconstructing and had that until a couple of years ago when we started tearing it apart drove it so that was my um, consolation prize and and the thing about it is it it just wasn't the same my 61 because it was a newer model Jeep and the flat fenders were the real Jeep. When I got back from the family reunion in 1986 and I realized we had seen the Jeep and I think we drove it if I'm not mistaken. I know mom and I did when we went down the first Christmas after we were married. I remember doing that. Yeah. So we drove around in it, and the, the fun thing about it is if you ran the battery down, all you had to do is jump start and pour a little gas in the carburetor and away you went. You know, I mean, it was about as simple and hard to, to kill as anything. Hook. All right, let's, uh, let's have some fun. All right. Out of the way. Yeah. You, I would watch back to the, yeah, watch back there. Okay. Yep, go for it. Yeah. Nice work, Murphy. <laughs> I came back and said, I'm going to get a Jeep. And so there was one at the top of the hill. Uh, we, li we lived at 1 West Main Street in Mountville. And if you go down to the bottom, there were railroad tracks and then up to the top. And at the very top of the hill, there was a house there. And a guy had this 61 Willys with a... Uh, steel top on it that he had pushed snow with or somebody had pushed snow with and I bought it for 1500 bucks and it had a 283 or 265 V8 and uh, a, a JC Whitney overdrive and the rear end was completely worn out in it and the transmission was worn out in it and <laughs> <laughs> it was in need of help when I bought it 35 years ago. <laughs> uh, let's maybe jack it up and put some stuff under the front wheels. Come on, come on. Yep. Keep trying. All right. Yep.
Tell me some memories of the farm. Oh my goodness. There used to be an old barn standing here. It had two uh, or three log um, ca uh, cages in there. And that's where they kept the bull in the first one and then mules in the second two. And it, you know, they weren't chink logs. They had gaps in them, but it were strong enough to hold those animals. And you know, the main aisle came down, then there was a lower level in the back, and then there was a upper level in the back, and the main hay mow was up in the top, and then we would come back on that little level, uh, that little addition on the back and play around. And there was a trap door that went up to the attic, and then there was a door, a couple of doors on the front of the barn that went out, and that's where we loaded the hay in. And Dan and I used to ride ponies down this little lane toward the barn, and we would try to catch on to the um, header above the door like they did in the cowboy movies, only we weren't trained um, horsemen, so we'd fall off and be laughing our heads off, and having fun. And then we'd go down in the, the bottom there and up toward his house, and ponies don't run, they just, kind of wobble along and so we'd be laughing and he'd end up on the neck of the pony up in front of the legs just laughing so hard he couldn't stay on anymore and he'd fall off and I was laughing following him and we just had a barrel of fun but you know this was the, this was the site of the original barn.